Morning. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday morning as we continue together in our time in John. I hope you've had a great start to your week. I'm looking forward to being with you tonight, today rather, as we uh, do John. Uh, and tonight we'll be uh, at, look forward to Bible study tonight at Wednesday Night Live at St. Matthew's. We're unpacking the text that we're going to look at in worship on Sundays. So that'll be fun th- tonight to dig into this coming Sunday's text. So I've kind of had fun. I've, I've been up to my eye teeth this semester in Bible study. So I kind of I kind of like that. That's one of my favorite things as a pastor is to dig into God's word. So um, let's... um. Pick up today, we're going to be reading John chapter 5, verses 19 through 29. John 5, 19 through 29. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son of Man can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him all that he is doing, and he will show him greater works than these so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, so the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Very truly I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Um, That's a big deal in the Jewish world, y'all where Jesus is. So let's go backwards and see here that he is talking with the religious leaders. And um, you probably know this, but just a little bit of a reminder. There was real debate in the Jewish world of Jesus' day about the resurrection. You had two major camps of teachers. You had the Sadducees, the Pharisees. The Sadducees were the chief priests, the the temple leader. That's who the Sadducees were. The Pharisees were the were the synagogue leaders. Uh, the way I describe it is your Sadducees were your downtown preachers and your and your Pharisees were your country preachers. So your Sadducees were bound to the temple and bound to the sacrificial system. That's who the Sadducees were. Pharisees were bound to the synagogue and they were bound more to the law and the keeping of the law. It was the Pharisees who wrote a lot of the laws that we see Jesus talking about. Remember, we talked yesterday about healing on the Sabbath. That was a Pharisaical thing. So where I'm going with this is there were two different trains of thoughts among these religious leaders. Sadducees did not believe there'd be a resurrection of the dead. Pharisees did. Sadducees only believed the books of Moses, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible were authoritative, where Pharisees believed that all of the Old Testament was authoritative. So the Sadducees would say, in the first five books of Moses, there is no concept of resurrection, so we do not believe in resurrection. But the Pharisees would say, no, we see it in other places throughout Scripture, so we do believe in it. So there was a constant debate there about the resurrection. And so Jesus says here, verse 29, well, 28, do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. What we see Jesus saying here is everyone will be resurrected. Everyone will be resurrected. Some will be resurrected for, for reward, others for punishment. And that, that makes me think of this beautiful quote by C.S. Lewis. He said, um, You've never met a mere mortal. He said, all of us are supernatural. Where all of us are designed and created for eternity. And I love that concept that you've never met an ordinary person or a mere mortal. You've only met supernatural beings. Beings who are eternal. Think about that for a minute, y'all. Think about how that means we should treat the sacredness of life, the sacredness of others, the sacredness of the people that we encounter on a daily basis. We should see people through that divine lens of 
eternity. Because that's how God sees them. Don't take each other for granted. C.S. Lewis also said the most, said outside of the blessed sacrament, the most, most holy thing you'll ever encounter is your neighbor. Our society makes us harden our heart against others and against their relationships. And that's not what Scripture teaches us. Scripture teaches us the, the, that all of us will be resurrected for judgment or for reward, but we're all supernatural. The Father, uh, verse 22, says, The Father judges no one, but has given all the judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. And whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father. Very truly, anyone who hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and who does and does not come under judgment. But it's passed from death to life. That's that's the difference, y'all. He doesn't say anyone who hears my words and is perfect in every way. Anyone who hears my words and always gets it right. Anyone who, who hears my words and is without sin. Anyone who hears my words and believes that he has sent me has eternal life. Romans 10, 9. If you believe in your heart and confess your mouth, you shall be saved. That's how we escape the penalty of death. That's how we live into new life. We shouldn't be afraid of these things. My wife tells me all the time that I'm a little morbid. Uh, you know, as a pastor, you deal with death a lot. And as a in my life as I've I've dealt with death a lot. I'm going to do a funeral tomorrow for a family member. Um, I'm used to Funerals, uh, I've said jokingly, sort of that death is an old friend for our family. Um, we live in fear of judgment of God, don't we? I had a conversation yesterday with a saint who was just recounting, have I done enough? <laughs> we hear this, verse, verse 29. We're going to come out. For those who have done good, resurrection life. Those who have done bad, resurrection con condemnation. And we're like, oh gosh, which 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 path am I going to go down? Am I going to go down the path of condemnation? Have I done have I done enough good? Have I done enough good to earn the good rewards? Or have I not done enough that I'm going to seek condemnation? We feel that, don't we? How many of us at night stay up wrestling with that? Have I done enough? Have I been faithful enough? Have, have I been good enough? Have I done enough to um, escape condemnation? Very truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but is passed from death to life. The, the bar, y'all, is not so high that we can't reach it. The, the bar, God doesn't set the bar so high that we can't reach it. He doesn't set it so high that we can't find it. That, that's not what he does. God's not out to get you, friends. God's not playing hide and seek with his will. God is not out to get you. The Bible tells us this. He is for us. And if God can be for us, who can be against us is what Romans 8 tells us. God is not against you. God is not out to get you. God, the Bible says that God wishes all should be saved. God wants you, God wants you to know him more than you want to know him. God's love for you is greater than your love for him. He's not out to get you. He's not. He's given the Son the, the authority to execute judgment because he's the Son of Man. But his desire is for you and for me and for all of us. Whenever we hear that word of God and the trump sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise for us to be resurrected. If we're still living, if we're, if we have passed into death at that point and are still living, his desire is for us to be resurrected to life. And if we hear his word and believe in him,
That is what will happen. We'll pass from death to life. So he's not out to get you, friends. He's not. He loves you. So remember that. He's not out to get you. Hope you have a great rest of your day. I will pick up tomorrow with a... We'll finish out chapter five tomorrow of John. Have a great day. <laughs>